Mrs. Johnson quickly realized that her horse, Daisy, was exhibiting unusual behavior, she appeared restless and uneasy, this sort of behavior was typically seen in horses about to go into labor, which was particularly strange since Daisy had exhibited no prior signs of being pregnant, as Daisy's condition escalated, it became clear she was, indeed, in the process of giving birth, after a challenging birth, the foal's head and front legs appeared, shortly followed by its body. Daisy lovingly cleaned her newborn and seemed content with her offspring, yet a stunned silence fell over all the onlookers, everyone stared at the foal in sheer disbelief, as they had not anticipated its remarkable appearance, Dr. Thompson, the attending veterinarian, wore a concerned look and remained silent, when Mrs. Johnson asked him to clarify what was happening, he could only stutter in response, I'm sorry, he began, but this isn't a foal, Mrs. Johnson was taken aback, not a foal. Then what was it? The situation with Daisy's offspring was perplexing, and Dr. Thompson's perplexed demeanor only deepened the enigma. Moreover, the question remained, how had Daisy become pregnant in the first place? In a small village nestled in the countryside, the Johnson family owned a modest farm, for generations. The Johnsons had cared for their farm, which was renowned in the community for their dedication to their animals, particularly their beloved mare, Daisy, Daisy. A striking black horse with a gentle disposition, was adored by everyone in the village, she had never been bred, as the Johnsons primarily kept her as a companion animal, thus, it was a complete surprise one spring morning when they noticed Daisy behaving oddly, she was pacing back and forth in her stall, whinnying and stomping her hooves, clearly in distress, Mrs. Johnson, a seasoned horsewoman, recognized these signs and suspected that Daisy might be in labor which was highly unusual given her lack of previous pregnancy symptoms, the Johnsons immediately called their local veterinarian, Dr. Thompson, who had been the Johnson family's trusted veterinarian for many years, he rushed to the farm, well aware of Daisy's history, upon his arrival, an anxious Mr. Johnson greeted him and led him to Daisy's stall, Dr. Thompson quickly assessed Daisy and confirmed that she was indeed in labor, with the foal's arrival imminent, Mrs. Johnson was puzzled, no stallion had been near Daisy's stall or even the same meadow, so her pregnancy remained a mystery. Initially, the pregnancy was a baffling development for Mrs. Johnson. As she grappled with this surprise, it swiftly became apparent that the impending birth was now the priority, as Daisy, her beloved mare, was on the verge of delivering. Dr. Thompson, the attending veterinarian, had diligently prepared for the event, ensuring all necessary medical equipment was at the ready. Despite the preparations, it was crucial for Daisy to attempt the delivery naturally at first. Dr. Thompson informed Mrs. Johnson that Daisy was in the early stages of labor, a phase which could span several hours or even extend to a full day before progressing into more active labor. During this waiting period, Mrs. Johnson, driven by a need to understand the origins of Daisy's pregnancy, decided to investigate, following a past incident. The Johnsons had equipped their farm with security cameras, reviewing the recordings around the time Daisy would have conceived. Mrs. Johnson made a startling discovery. The footage revealed an unexpected visitor on the night in question. Although Daisy had been alone in her stall, the video clearly showed someone had opened the gate, allowing a stallion to enter. Mrs. Johnson immediately recognized the stallion as Rocky, belonging to a neighboring farm. This revelation was puzzling Rocky's behavior had been unusual weeks earlier, but Mrs. Johnson hadn't suspected he would be a part of this mystery. Even more bewildering was the sight of a woman facilitating this encounter, particularly since Rocky's owner was a widower, deepening the intrigue around the incident. Urgently, Mrs. Johnson shared this perplexing footage with her husband and Dr. Thompson, gathering around the computer screen to piece together the events. As they deliberated over the motives and the identity of the woman in the video, Dr. Thompson alerted them that Daisy had transitioned into active labor. Mrs. Johnson rushed to Daisy's side, finding her in considerable distress. It won't be long now, Dr. Thompson remarked, noting Daisy's intense and rhythmic contractions signaling the imminent birth. Daisy exhibited signs of discomfort. She rolled on the ground, stood, paced, and lay down repeatedly in her stall. A clear display of her restlessness, each pant and shift heightened Mrs. Johnson's concern for her horse, but Dr. Thompson remained a comforting presence, reassuring her as they anticipated the arrival of the foal. The hope was that this challenging phase would soon culminate in a successful birth, 
marking a new beginning amidst the unfolding mysteries. Throughout the process, Mrs. Johnson remained by Daisy's side, providing comforting strokes and soft words of encouragement, assuring her that help was at hand. As the team worked, Mrs. Johnson reflected on the events that had led to this moment. Despite her initial trust in Dr. Thompson's expertise, she was glad that her intuition had guided her to further inspect Daisy's condition. Her timely observation had allowed them to catch the complication before it was too late, potentially saving both Daisy and her foal, Mr. Johnson, after his stage diversion, joined his wife. Watching anxiously as the veterinarians continued their efforts, he admired his wife's resolve and her deep connection with Daisy, which had shown brightly in this critical moment. Finally, after tense hours that seemed to stretch into eternity, the team's efforts bore fruit. The foal was successfully repositioned and delivered safely, much to everyone's relief. Daisy, though exhausted, showed signs of recovery as she nuzzled her newborn. A touching scene that brought smiles and a few relieved tears from everyone present. Dr. Thompson, now fully attentive to the seriousness of the situation that had unfolded, thanked Mrs. Johnson for her vigilance and apologized for his initial oversight. He acknowledged the importance of listening closely to the concerns of pet owners, who often understand their animals' behaviors and needs intimately. The incident reinforced the bond between the Johnsons and their beloved Daisy, and underscored the critical role of attentive care and the invaluable insight of an owner's intuition in animal welfare. As the veterinary team packed up their equipment, Mrs. Johnson whispered a heartfelt thank you to Daisy, promising to always trust her instincts when it came to the well-being of her cherished animals. In a particularly precarious situation, Daisy the mare was found in a breech position during labor. Presenting tail first rather than the typical head first, this abnormal presentation posed a significant risk of severe complications for both Daisy and her unborn foal, necessitating immediate and skillful intervention. Dr. Thompson, alongside his team, approached the situation with meticulous care. They expertly maneuvered the foal into the correct birthing position. This task involved delicately adjusting the foal's legs to ensure a safe delivery, minimizing potential harm to both the newborn and Daisy. The process was fraught with tension, requiring quick, decisive actions and a steady hand from the veterinary team. On the sidelines, Mrs. Johnson watched with growing anxiety. The sight of her cherished horse enduring such distress was heart-wrenching. Aware of the inherent dangers of equine childbirth, she had never witnessed a labor as challenging as this. Her emotions were compounded by resentment towards the person she held responsible for Daisy's predicament. Unable to contribute to the medical efforts, she resolved to confront her neighbor, believing him to be at fault. Driven by anger, Mrs. Johnson stormed to her neighbor's house and banged on his door with urgency. Her neighbor, Philip, opened the door in mid-dinner, surprised by her sudden appearance. Your dinner can wait. What have you done to Daisy? She demanded, Philip. Clearly confused, denied any wrongdoing. Despite his protests, Mrs. Johnson was relentless. She presented video evidence on her laptop, showing Philip's stallion in an incriminating situation with Daisy. As they watched the footage together, Philip noticed a familiar detail, a hand that he recognized. It belonged to his daughter, he confessed with a heavy heart, admitting her inexplicable actions of placing his stallion, Rocky, in Daisy's stall, before Mrs. Johnson could delve deeper into the revelation. Her phone rang with an urgent call from Dr. Thompson. He informed her that the foal's arrival was imminent and Daisy was in critical condition. Losing a significant amount of blood, Mrs. Johnson, accompanied by a remorseful Philip, rushed back to the farm. Upon their arrival, Dr. Thompson urgently updated them. Daisy is in a critical state. We need to deliver the foal immediately. By then, the foal's tiny hooves were already visible. But Daisy was too weakened by the strenuous labor to push effectively on her own. Dr. Thompson carefully attached a specialized chain to the foal's hooves, monitoring Daisy's contractions closely. With each contraction, he gently pulled, aiding the delivery. The tension was palpable, sweat beating on Dr. Thompson's forehead as he focused intently on saving both mother and foal, as Daisy exerted herself with another powerful contraction. There was a glimmer of hope when the foal began to make its way into the world at a gradual pace. Despite the challenging circumstances, Daisy seemed to be handling the situation with remarkable resilience. One more push, Daisy, encouraged Dr. Thompson loudly, bracing himself for the final act of delivery. With one robust pull, the foal descended onto the ground, 
eliciting a collective exhale of relief from everyone present, yet. Their initial relief swiftly morphed into concern as the newborn lay unmoving on the hay-strewn floor of the stable. Mrs. Johnson felt her heart tighten as she observed Daisy tenderly nudging her and her offspring. The seconds stretched into what felt like an eternity, all eyes riveted on the motionless foal, just as Mrs. Johnson was on the verge of turning away, a subtle twitch caught her attention. This slight movement gradually became more distinct until the foal clumsily tried to rise to its feet, overcome with relief. Mrs. Johnson turned and hugged Dr. Thompson, though she noticed his expression was tinged with worry rather than joy. What's troubling you, Dr. Mrs. Johnson inquired, a sense of anxiety coloring her voice. Dr. Thompson hesitated before replying, that's no ordinary foal, with a puzzled look, Mrs. Johnson scrutinized the newborn more closely and had to concede that the foal did indeed exhibit unusual features compared to its parents, what's unusual about it, she pressed the veterinarian for answers, before Dr. Thompson could respond, the sound of a car pulling into the driveway caught through the tension, Philip emerged from the front of the house, followed by a woman whose arrival seemed to explain the unfolding drama. It was evident he had summoned his daughter. You did this to my Daisy, Mrs. Johnson accused as the woman approached the barn. Please, let's remain calm, Dr. Thompson interjected, trying to defuse the escalating situation. And who are you, Mrs. Johnson demanded. I'm Tilly, Philip's daughter, the woman replied, her voice steady. You're the one who paired Rocky with Daisy, Mrs. Johnson reiterated her accusation. Tilly exhaled deeply. Yes, I did it, but I regret it now. I was desperate for money, and given Rocky's impressive pedigree, I thought it could be a quick way to resolve my financial woes. Mrs. Johnson was taken aback, and how did you plan to profit from this? Daisy is my horse, so how would you benefit? Fidgeting nervously, Tilly confessed. My father doesn't know, but I conducted a DNA test on Rocky. We had adopted him years ago without knowledge of his lineage, and out of sheer curiosity, I had him tested. The results were astonishing. Rocky isn't just any horse, he's a NAB stropper. A very rare and valuable breed, Tilly's voice trailed off as she divulged her plan, recognizing the high stakes of breeding such a rare line. Driven by her own dire financial straits, I was fully aware that selling Rocky could potentially be a profitable venture, yet, my deep bond with him was overwhelming, the thought of parting with him was unbearable, instead, I decided to let him breed with Daisy a choice I would later view as imprudent, after Daisy gave birth. I momentarily toyed with the idea of absconding with the newborn foal, but I quickly dismissed this plan, knowing it was destined to fail, consumed by guilt, I found myself compulsively visiting Daisy to check on her welfare, as remorse gnawed at me, I was determined not to involve law enforcement in the matter, when Mrs. Johnson eventually addressed the situation. Her tone had softened considerably compared to the palpable anger she exhibited just a short while before. She recognized the strain of the day and the close brush with a potentially catastrophic situation but was relieved that it hadn't worsened. Nevertheless, she resolutely instructed me to leave her property and forbade my return, understanding her reasons, especially considering how I had betrayed her trust for my own selfish ends. I departed quietly, offering no resistance, Daisy and her foal, whom misses. Johnson affectionately named Dorothy, meaning God's gift in Greek, thrived under her care. Occasionally, she allowed Rocky to spend time with them in the meadow, Mrs. Johnson never entertained the idea of selling Daisy or Dorothy, as the financial gain held no appeal to her, they all shared a long, joyful life together, surrounded by the beauty of the meadow and the harmony of their companionship, do you have any thoughts after watching the above story, tell us in the comments section, we'd like to hear your thoughts. That's for today's story, and if you liked the video, please subscribe and give a thumbs up. See you next time.